Part 6 of the Great Classics, the early 90s and CK1. The beginning of the 90s were a tumultuous time starting with a war in the Middle East. American President George Bush Sr. deployed U.S. forces into Saudi Arabia and urged other countries to follow suit. In September 1991, the band Nirvana dropped their top-charting album Nevermind. By 1992, their title Smells Like Teen Spirit became the anthem to a whole generation. I let my hair grow and bought my first guitar. This often marks the point at which grunge aesthetic hit the mainstream. In reaction to the materialistic extravagances of the 80s, youths were now searching for authenticity and adopting unisex fashion. The early 90s were also marked with an important recession precipitated by restrictive monetary policy. Most lost their jobs during this period, including my own mother. Simultaneously, the world was also struggling with the ever-growing HIV pandemic. By the end of 1993, there were an estimated 2.5 million AIDS cases globally. HIV awareness campaigns were omnipresent in the media. Sex became clinical. In October 1994, Calvin Klein, with its finger on the pulse, launched CK1, a bright, humble, and optimistic unisex fragrance created by perfumer Alberto Morias. The perfume, contained in a medical light flask, was an instant success. Combining affordability with a clean, zesty blend of citrus and light florals, the perfume embodied in scent the hopes and aspirations of the youth from the 90s. Leveraging an innovative and inclusive campaign, CK1 was averaging a whopping 90 million in sales annually throughout the decade. With its distinctively modern blend, it is no surprise that this perfume continues to appeal to today's market. In a world where public health is once again at the top of everyone's mind, the political landscape uncertain, and fights for equality are supercharged, CK1 is more relevant than ever, innately channeling the spirit of a similar time. Make sure you like and follow for more stories on great classic perfumes.